Hello there, this is L24 World News and these are your headlines. Nancy Pelosi has landed in Taiwan offering unwavering commitment to supporting its democracy as already heightened tensions with China escalate. Nancy's Pelosi visit to Taiwan has sparked fury in Beijing after she ignored its warnings not to travel to the island. A team of inspectors boarded the first grain carrying ship to leave Ukraine port in wartime on Wednesday before it continues to its final destination in Lebanon. Yemen's warring parties agree to extend a four-month truce just hours before it expires. The UN envoy announced Tuesday voting to intensify efforts to secure lasting peace. In U.S., Kansas voters on Tuesday sent a resounding message about their desire to protect abortion rights, rejecting a ballot measure in the conservative state. Hello again, welcome. I'm your host, Abdurrahim Kashour, and those were today's top stories. We start with the visit of U.S. House of Representatives Speaker Nancy Pelosi, who left Taiwan earlier today after a visit that angered China which warned several times of taking harsh countermeasures against this trip. During a joint news conference with U.S. House of Representatives, I said she, her country wants Taiwan to always have freedom with security and will not back away from that. And we want Taiwan to always have freedom. Let's just put it in perspective. Over four decades ago, the Taiwan Relations Act was built in building a strong bond between our two countries, advancing our shared interests of governance, economy, and security, while respecting the one China policy. Military exercises are unnecessary responses. Taiwan has always been open to constructive dialogue, and we will work with stakeholders to bring about stability and peace in the region. Back to this visit, the U.S. House of uh, Representatives Speaker Nancy Pelosi arrived in Taiwan late on Tuesday on a trip. She said she shows unwavering American commitment to Taiwan. Pelosi and the rest of the, her delegation arrived in Taipei after the nighttime landing on a flight from Malaysia to begin a visit that risked pushing U.S.-Chinese relations to a new law. It's a farce, pure and simple. Under the cover of democracy, the United States violates the sovereignty of China. In an apparent reprisal to policies landing on Taiwan, Beijing has suspended some trade with Taipei. Chinese, China has also launched military exercises near the strait and amounted to blockade of its sea and airspace. The first Chinese reactions have pushed Taipei to start negotiations with Japan and Philippines to find alternative aviation routes. And for more analysis about the matter, we have talked to Dr. Gregory Simons, and he has this to say. What they're trying to do is resurrect these uh, strategic imperatives that... Uh, uh, were Brzezinski formulated in the, the grand uh, chessboard. And what they're doing is they're going about this in two ways. One, trying to build their own alliances or rebuild their alliances because they're rather tattered. And secondly, to wedge and to break up different alliances that oppose them. Uh, I do think this is going to be unsuccessful because, I mean, if we look at it, uh, the U.S. has been at continuous war for over two decades, and their armed forces are in disarray. And if we're talking about it, I mean, the focus of their armed forces is on sheer numbers, the tangible aspects of military power.
In the same line of thought, Japan has expressed concerns over China's military exercise in response to U.S. House of Representatives Speaker Nancy Pelosi's visit to Taiwan. Let's have a listen. The sea area announced by China as the region of military exercises to be conducted from noon on August 4th includes Japan's exclusive economic zone. Japan has expressed its concern to the Chinese side, taking into account that the contents of the military activities include live fire drills. China could attempt to bring about a reunification by non-military means such as strengthening economic ties. But in any military confrontation, China's armed forces would dwarf those of Taiwan. China spends more than any country except the US on defense and could draw on a huge range of capabilities from naval power to missile technology aircraft and cyber attacks. Much of China military power is focused elsewhere, but in overall terms of active duty personnel, for example, there is a huge imbalance between the two sides. More than 5,000 soldiers from the U.S., Indonesia, Australia, Japan, and Singapore participated in this year's military exercise. In the western Indonesian island of Sumatra and the Riau Islands, since the drills beginning in 2009, the joint military exercises have been held at their biggest scale. The, this, despite the fact that the drills would be far larger than the prior ones, Washington said they were not directed at any one nation. Uh, with all of the technical and procedural aspects of this, it's just a, a really important expression of our, uh, our teamwork and our interoperability and our, uh, our, uh, our unity really as a, as a group of nations that uh, are, you know, seek to continue to have a free and open Indo-Pacific. Top Southeast Asian diplomats met in Cambodia's capital on Wednesday to intensify efforts to stop the escalating violence in Myanmar. Cambodian Prime Minister said that there had been some progress, including in providing humanitarian aid. The ASEAN bloc condemned the recent execution of four democracy activists by the ruling military. Another topic expected to dominate the ASEAN meeting with the, this week is the U.S. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi's visit to Taiwan. Cambodia, as well as the other ASEAN members, are disappointed and horrified about the executions of all the opposition party activists. Even though myself and other leaders have appealed to them to reconsider of these executions for the benefit of political dialogue, peace and the national reconciliation. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov arrived in Myanmar for meetings with the conflict racked country's junta leader. Lavrov held talks with the government on security and economic issues before heading to the ASEAN summit. Lavrov said that a visit to Taiwan by U.S. House of Representatives Speaker Nancy Pelosi was a deliberate attempt by Washington to irritate China. It is a desire to prove to everyone their impunity and to exercise permissiveness. I do what I want, something like that. I see no other reason to create such an annoyance, almost out of the blue, knowing very well what it means for the People's Republic of China. Opening the Russia-Ukraine fight, the first cargo ship to leave Ukraine since the beginning of the Ukraine's conflict has run into bad, uh, into bad weather in the Black Sea and is set to arrive later than scheduled in Istanbul. The ship carrying Ukrainian grain to world market was sighted in the Black Sea off the coast of the Turkey on Tuesday. The vessel is boarded by a team of inspectors to its final destination in Lebanon. 
The deal between Moscow and Kiev to unblock Ukrainian grain exports may offer a way forward to a possible ceasefire in the five-month conflict, said former German Chancellor, a friend of the Russian President Vladimir Putin. Schroeder said that solutions to crucial problems such as Crimea with, uh, that Russia has annexed in 2014 could be found over time, maybe not over 99 years like Hong Kong, but in the next generation. Russian ministry reported in its daily briefing on Telegram that Russian aerospace forces delivered a blow to a temporary de deployment point of Ukrainian foreign legion near the city of Mykolaiv using high-precision weapons. It also reported that the successful missile strike has neutralized over 250 mercenaries. Over 200 foreign mercenaries have reported being killed in a missile strike in southeastern uh, south, uh, Ukraine. The statement also added that over 20 units of the military equipment were also destroyed during the attack. To a different matter now, the OPEC oil cartel and its allies are meeting to decide how much crude to produce in September. The market has been largely expecting OPEC Plus to keep output steady or opt for a slight increase. Two OPEC Plus sources said on Wednesday the group was highly likely to consider a modest increase of output with one source saying it will be lower than 300,000 barrels per day. The United Nations Special Envoy from Yemen, Hans Grunberg, announced on Tuesday a landmark truce in Yemen, which has been holding since April and has been renewed for an additional two months through the second day of October. Nabil Khazini. The United Nations announced a two additional month extension of an existing truce in Yemen between two warring sides a hope of intensifying negotiations to achieve a more lasting peace in this country ravaged by nearly eight years of war. The extension includes a commitment by the government and the Houthis to reach an expanded agreement as soon as possible. An expanded agreement would also provide an opportunity to negotiate a nationwide ceasefire, humanitarian and economic issues, and to prepare for resumption of the Yemeni-led political process under UN auspices to reach a sustainable and just peace. The renewal announcement came hours after a Nomeni delegation concluded three-day talks with Houthi leadership in the Yemeni capital Sana'a. The already four-month-old ceasefire has been the longest nationwide ease in fighting since the conflict began in the poorest country in the Arabian Peninsula. On the streets, the Yemenis welcomed the truce cautiously. Extending the truce should be a key to peace, should see salaries paid and the integration of the central bank and the national currency. People are suffering greatly. A truce like the previous one is useless because it's neither war nor peace. The extension of the truce comes at a time when Yemen is facing a drop in humanitarian aid. Faced with one of the worst humanitarian crises in the world, the war in Yemen had already killed nearly 400,000 people by the end of last year and destroyed a large part of the country. Amid calls for dialogue between political rivals, Iraqi Sadri's movements called on followers who have occupied parliament for four days to move their protests outside. However, protesters were told to remain inside the Green Zone, which houses Iraq's government buildings and foreign embassies. In a major victory for abortion rights, Kansas voters on Tuesday rejected an effort to strip away their state's abortion protect, uh, protection, sending a decisive message about the issue's popularity in the first political test since the Supreme Court overturned the Roe v. Wade in June. Marim Zian. It's the first time since the U.S. Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade, voters have a say in reproductive rights. 59 of Kansas voters rejected an effort to remove abortion protections from the conservative state's constitution, sending a resounding message about their desire to protect abortion rights. 
I'm super proud to be from Kansas tonight, and I feel like my state just showed up and boldly told me that they are going to take care of me and my female friends and everyone that can get pregnant in the state of Kansas. We are protected tonight. Tuesday's vote result will prevent Kansas Republican-led legislator from passing severe abortion restrictions in the state. Kentucky, California, Vermont, and possibly Michigan will have abortion on the ballot this fall. The amendment's failure in the conservative state lifted Democrats' hopes that the issue of abortion rights will draw voters to the party in November's midterm elections, even as they worry about surging inflation. U.S. President Joe Biden joined Democrats across the country in applauding the results on Tuesday. As a result of the ruling, Kansas allows abortion up to 22 weeks of pregnancy with several restrictions, including a mandatory 24-hour waiting period and a mandatory parental consent for minors. More lenient abortion policies than its red state neighbors. Trillian continued elected president on Wednesday called for unity to overcome the country's crippling economic crisis in his first major address to the parliament since his inauguration. Discussions with the, the International Monetary Fund for a four-year program that could provide up to three billion would resume in August. Uh, Vikerman Singh told lawmakers. A strong foundation needs to be laid so as to not repeat this kind of economic crisis in our country. The economy should be modernized, economic stability should be established and transformed into a competitive export economy. In this context, we are now preparing the necessary reports, plans, rules and regulation, laws and programs. President of uh, the Republic, Mr. Abdel Majid Tibun, made a phone call with the Italian Prime Minister Mario Draghi in which he praised the distinguished level of bilateral relations between the two friendly countries, also mentioning the level of relations between the two countries according to a press release issued by the Presidency of the Republic. To Palestine now, dozens of uh, settlers stormed the blast Al-Aqsa Mosque today in an effort to impose temporal and spatial division on the mosque and their heavy guarded by the Zionist entity police with uh, the framework of the various forms and methods of Zionist attack against defenseless Palestinians. Three Palestinians were shot today during confrontation with the occupation forces after raiding the village of Kavt Kodam. As uh, UN experts denounce the Zionist entity's harassment of human rights defenders and humanitarian workers as they seek to support and protect people in the Masfar Yatla communities in the occupied West Bank who are at risk and a grave human rights violation and at risk of forcible transfer. UN press briefing the Director General of the International Atomic Energy Agency, Rafael Mariano, expressed optimism on Iran's nuclear deal. Now, the Iran of 2022 is the nuclear program is very different from the one in 2015. And I think everybody recognizes that. Start starting with the Iranians who are saying that they are making you know, strides and, 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 uh, and amazing advances, and the, the, the program is moving ahead uh, very, very fast. And not, not only ahead, but, but sideways as well, because it's, it's, um, it's growing in, in, in ambition and in capacity. And now for more international news, let's follow this roundup by Zahra Furjani. The French parliament ratified the protocols for the accession of Sweden and Finland to the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. France's National Assembly voted by 209 in favor and 46 against the move on Wednesday, joining 20 allies who have already ratified the protocols. The CIA drone strike that killed al-Qaeda leader Ayman Zawahiri delivered a long-sought win for U.S. President Joe Biden's counterterrorism strategy, according to officials. However, it also sharpened concerns about militants' presence in Afghanistan. A Congolese military delegation was sent to Beni, northeastern DRC, this Tuesday, two days after three people died and several injured after UN peacekeepers opened fire on civilians in Kassindi at the border with Uganda. 
Prosecutors in Mexico launched an investigation into former President Enrique Peña Nieto for several alleged crimes, including money laundering and illicit enrichment. Weeks after the country's anti-money laundering agency accused him of handling millions of dollars in possibly illegal funds. To this end, let's have a reminder for our main top stories. Nancy Pelosi has landed in Taiwan offering unwavering commitment to supporting its democracy as already heightened tensions with China escalate. Nancy's Pelosi visit to Taiwan has sparked fury in Beijing after she ignored its warnings not to travel to the island. A team of inspectors boarded the first grain carrying ship to leave Ukraine port in wartime on Wednesday before it continues to its final destination in Lebanon. Yemen's warring parties agreed to extend a four-month truce just hours before it expires. The UN envoy announced Tuesday voting to intensify efforts to secure lasting peace. In U.S., Kansas voters on Tuesday sent a resounding message about their desire to protect abortion rights, rejecting a ballot measure in the conservative state. For more updates, you can follow the L24 special network pages, Facebook, Instagram, as well YouTube. Bye for now.